All right, here we go. Question number seven from our college algebra homework number seven in my lab math is a word problem. So buckle up. Here we go. It's going to be a bumpy ride. We've got in 2012, the population of a city was 5.27 million and the exponential growth rate was 2.67% per year. And this problem has four parts, okay? So the first part, find the exponential growth function. Up here in this window, I've written down the basic formula for exponential growth or decay. Uh, this particular problem has growth. And, okay, just to give you a fun fact, the rate here, the rate for a growth problem will be positive. If it's a decay problem, your rate here will be negative, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to take this formula and we're going to fill in with the information that is given to create our exponential growth function. All right, here we go. Part A, P of T equals. Now this first thing you see, the P with the little subscript zero, that is P naught. The way you say that, that is P naught, and it means the initial population. Here we see that the population in 2012 was 5.27 million, and so that means that we're going to start counting in 2012, and that makes the 5.27 the initial population. So that'll be 527 E, remember E is not a variable, it's a constant. The rate is 2.67. Remember we have to convert that to a decimal to plug it into the formula and work with it. And to convert that to a decimal, you have to move the decimal two places to the left. And so that'll give us 0 0.0267 for the rate in order for this to be a function, we do have to have a variable. There has to be a dependent and an independent variable. And so that means that the T is going to stay T so that I can plug values in for T and calculate populations. Okay, so this is going to be our answer for part A, this right here. And let's plug that into my lab math and see if I lied to you. 0.27e, let's see, to the 0.0267t. Bam, there we go. First part done. Now, part B, the population of the city in 2018. Remember, we start counting in 2012. So we need to know how many years after 2012 is 2018, and I think that turns out to be six. So up here in the right-hand corner, part B, what they're really asking us to find is P of six. And that means that we're going to replace the T with a six. And I'm going to use parentheses. You could have used a time symbol, but that I think with the decimal, that would look a little confusing. And then to work that out, we're going to bring up our handy-dandy calculator right here. So we've got 5.27. E. We want the E to the, so that is shift LN, 0 0.0267. And I'm going to say times six. You could also put parentheses six. Either one of those is going to do times six. And that tells us 6.18. Now, does it say where to round to? It says round to one decimal place. So the eight is going to make that one become a two. That'll be 6.2. Now, what does that represent? That is the population after six years. So that'll be 6.2 million. If you need to know what that represents, that's 6.2 million people. And let's see if that's right. 6.2. Bam. All right. Next one. The population of the city will be 7 million 
in about, okay, so now they're asking me to find a number of years. And remember in this formula right here, T is time. And so what they've given me, this 7 is people, which is P of T. So this problem is going to be a little more exciting. Here we're going to replace P of T with 7. We've got 5.27 E to the 0 0.0267 T. And this time we're going to have to solve for T. Yeah, so this is going to be a little more exciting. Oh, okay, here we go. Strap in. We've got to get rid of this coefficient first. The 5.27, which is the coefficient of E, has to go. So remember, that means that that's multiplied by E. So we're going to have to divide both sides by 5.27 to get those to cancel. And then we're going to bring up our handy-dandy calculator. And we're going to do 7 divided by 5.27. And that is not nice. Let's see if that's even any nicer as a desk. Woo, not nice. Let's see, how do I want to leave that? Let's leave that as 700 over 527. I know that's not, that doesn't look nice. But we're going to leave it like that so that our answer is more accurate. Okay, so the 5.27s cancel. That leaves me E to the point zero two six seven T. And so now what we could do is we could now, since this is an exponential, we could convert to a logarithm. Uh, or I'm going to take another approach. Remember, whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. So I'm going to take the natural log of this side, which means I have to take the natural log of the other side. And fun fact, anytime you take the natural log of E, those cancel. And the exponent, remember using the power rule, that can come down to become the coefficient. But since the ln and E cancel, then that's just going to be 0 0.0267t equals whatever the natural log of 700 over 527 is. Okay, and then notice how close I am to solving for t. The last step is to divide both sides by 0 0.0267. So this is going to get divided by 0 0.0267. And then all of this is going to have to plug into the calculator to get us our time. All right, so thank God for the Casio class whiz, because this is not going to be that bad with the class whiz. We've got our fraction. We've got the natural log of a fraction, 700 over 527. Don't forget to close your parenthesis, over 0 0.0267. And then we need to round to one decimal place. So that's going to be 10.6 rounded. Now, what does that mean? That means 10.6 years after 2012. So 10.6 years after 2012 is when the population will be 7 million. Okay. Now, they just want the, they don't want the date. They want the amount of years. 10.6, and then the last thing they want is the doubling time. How long is it going to take the population to double? Um, I believe there is a shortcut for that. Uh, let's make a note of it here. If you want to find the doubling time, that's going to be the natural log of 2 divided by your rate <clears throat> for doubling time, okay? Now, if they were to say tripling time, instead of a 2, you would use a 3. But for doubling time, it's going to be the natural log of 2 divided by R. So in our case, that time is going to be the natural log of 2 divided by the rate, which was 0 0.0267. And again, with our handy-dandy calculator, 
natural log of 2 divided by 0 0.0267. And notice I set it up with division instead of using my fraction button. I'll get the same answer. 25 point, what does it want to round to? Round to one decimal place. Okay, now this is tricky. That 9 sees a 6 and wants to round up to a 10. So to one decimal place, that's actually going to be 26.0. And I'm going to put that trailing 0 just in case it wants it. 26.0. All right, a lot of stuff going on there. I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to put them in the comment section below. Or you can text me. And thanks for watching.